In this video, we dive into the realm of 3D printing and post-processing for watertight models. But we are not talking about simple tabletop things like flower pots. Nope, this time we are actually diving deep underwater to explore the possibilities of watertight 3D prints ready for scuba diving at 40 meters and beyond. This video takes a slightly different approach compared to our usual content. This time we want to take you through everything, including the trial and error process, and offer some valuable tips for creating these models at home. We are going to show you the whole story of how we designed an external light for underwater photography. The start was pretty wild. We wanted to test all sorts of 3D printed models labeled as watertight. We tried printing various enclosures and boxes. We also tried both the FFF and SLA 3D printing with various post-processing techniques. And we even went on to make our own silicone gaskets. The results, as you might expect, were quite mixed. But needless to say, amidst a couple of failures, we stumbled upon several successful procedures as well, which eventually led us to the idea of creating a fully functional waterproof light. Armed with what we'd learned, we put together our first model, made from a cheap LED panel intended for soft lighting for macro photography. The result? Far from success. The first idea was to seal it with O-rings, but since the surface of an object printed from a standard filament is never perfectly smooth, even after we post-processed it with epoxy resin, it failed instantly. So we decided to seal all connections with silicone and close the electronics inside. This worked well for shallow depths, but at 10 meters it failed, critically. So we pressed on. Taking apart the failed model, we salvaged the LED and backplate for another attempt. This time we glued everything with epoxy resin, even going so far as to seal the power input with it. Failure at this point was not an option. But despite our efforts, it leaked again at 10 meters due to micro cracks we were not aware of. To add to our woes, the GoPro documenting the test also failed. At this point, one might say enough is enough, but we were not ready to lose our fight. There had to be a way. So we tried a different approach. We ordered a high-powered 12,000 lumen LED along with flat heat pipes for cooling and some inexpensive electronics to make it all work. We revisited the entire design process and printed everything with the original Prusa SL1S Speed 3D printer. Will it work this time? Let's find out. Again, we took it for sea diving without testing it at home first. We are not exactly setting the best example here, but we were super curious to find out whether it will hold. Okay, here goes nothing. 9 meters, looking good. 10 meters, this depth was critical for the last design, remember? 15 meters and still holding. 21 meters? This is already far beyond our expectations. 28.6 meters. Not bad, right? So let's shine a light on some marine life. Uh, hi, just a quick question, please. Oh, good evening, sir. Hi, we've been trying to reach you regarding your car's extended warranty and... Um, okay. Uh, uh, ex excuse me, sir, uh, would you spare a minute? Oh, oh, never mind. Did, did you adjust your life, Z? Oh, uh, evening, sir. Oh, look, a flying pancake. Nice camouflage, man. Hello there. Our experiment went exceptionally well, so let's walk you through the process. We decided to build a second light. At this point, we felt that a single 12,000 lumen light wasn't sufficient. So let's start with the SLA prints. The LED releases staggering heat at maximum power, so we opted for the professional Loctite 3843 resin for its remarkable toughness and a heat distortion temperature of 60 degrees Celsius. 
Everything should be as tight and smooth as possible. That's why we cut and sanded out all bumps and flaws. When the sanding was done and all parts fit together well, we cleaned them thoroughly and degreased them to ensure a good bond with the glue. For the electronics, we used solid copper wires that would be insulated with a bonding silicone. Using stranded wires turned out to be too risky as the water could find a way through the wire. Both the fuse and the LED panel must be coated with heat conductive paste. Then we glued the main body with silicone, specifically using Ecoflex silicone, which should bond effectively, possess good viscosity and exhibit excellent temperature resistance. Once assembled, we fill the prepared channels with silicone to seal everything. It is crucial to work quickly before the silicone solidifies. Also, we strongly recommend removing any bubbles from the silicone mix before applying it. If you don't have a vacuum chamber like us, at least try to eliminate the largest bubbles in the syringe. After soldering the power input wires to the solid copper wires, we covered the connection with another SLA printed part and filled it with silicone. This proved to be the perfect watertight seal for the wiring. Alternatively, you can use epoxy glue or super glue as we did with the battery case. The key is to fill the channel to prevent any water leakage. However, a flexible silicone seal also protects the wire insulation from cracking at bends. Finally, we glued the plexiglass cover with epoxy resin and secured it with a 3D printed cover. It turned out that this hadn't been the best idea, but we'll get to it in a minute. Now let's talk about the battery case and LED switch. Making the LED PSU watertight was pretty simple. We used silicone to glue the parts together and secured them with super glue. The entire setup is now controlled by a magnetic switch from the outside. The battery case is the only part that needs to be opened repeatedly. A simple cylinder sealed with two or three O-rings worked the best for us. There are only two simple rules to take into account. First, all the surfaces that come in contact with the O-rings must be perfectly smooth. Simply send them with fine sandpaper. Second, always use silicone grease for the sealing. This lowers friction and improves watertight performance. Now, finally, it's time for some field testing. We took it to the Red Sea and guess what? It worked. The whole setup was perfectly watertight and survived the entire expedition. We gave it a hard time in the field, took it for 28 dives and even got it to a depth of 46 meters during one of the dives. So let's take a look at what we saw there. Now, the question is, how did it survive repeated diving? To be fair, this was finally the first working prototype and it served the purpose surprisingly well. However, we still found several areas in need of improvement. First of all, the bond between plexiglass and epoxy resin is simply not the best option. It withstood the excessive water pressure well enough, but it's quite possible that a single hit, something as simple as a bad handling, could cause a leak. Sealing it with silicone and securing it with screws would be much better. Second, stranded wires can be cut or pinched and then suffer from corrosion. We suggest adding extra protection by putting them in a rubber tube. Third, the arms holding the light are weak and need improving. 
Honestly, they were printed several hours before departure as there was no time to design anything better. They kind of work though, but they are far from ideal. So is that it? Well, we would love to go further and make an RC submersible, for example, but this might take a while. But if you're already working on something like that, do let us know in the comments. We would love to see your work. Oh, and by the way, you might be wondering why we tested our models in the sea. Well, we also tried some Czech quarries and ponds. However, those waters are cold, murky and brimming with aquatic plants. So it's not an ideal test environment to show on a video. So that's it for today. Happy printing!